okay? They tell you things like this here. They tell you in Psalms 122 and look what they tell you to do in Psalms 122 and I want the church to pay close attention to it. Psalms 122 Psalms 122, and I'm going to read the sixth verse. It says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love be. Now, come to understand what the Lord is saying in Psalms 122 and the sixth verse. Now, come to understand what the Lord is saying. They quick to tell you that. Now I'm going to another part of the scripture and I want the church to pay close attention to what the Lord is saying. Okay? Isaiah chapter 66. And I'm going to read the 12th verse. It say, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her, like a river, and the glory of the Gentile, like a flowing stream. Then should ye suck, ye should be born upon her sides, and be Bandle upon her knees. Now, why am I saying that about like the river and the glory of the Gentile, like a flowing stream? Be close attention to what the Lord is saying. And I'm going to go to Isaiah, and this here what I'm going to read, which is in Isaiah. Look what it says. Look what the Lord said. What the Lord mean in talking about the Gentiles. John tell us this here. That Jesus came unto his own. And his own received him not. John chapter 1. The 11 verse tell us. To the twelve, the eleven words, he said, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now with the grace of God, I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 48. And I want the church to pay close attention to what the Lord says. Okay. Isaiah chapter 48 and I want the church to pay close attention to what the Lord is saying and I'm going to read the 22nd verse they say there is no peace said the Lord unto the wicked now I'm going to Isaiah 57 and I'm going to read the 21 verse. There is no peace, said my God to the wicked. Now I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 6. And I'm going to read the 14 verse. Isaiah chapter 6 and I'm going to read
Isaiah chapter 6. Okay. And I want you all to come to know what the Lord is saying. Now, Jeremiah chapter 8. I'm going to Jeremiah chapter 8. And I'm just giving you all a little summary of what the Lord is trying to get you to understand. Jeremiah chapter 8. And the 14 verse to the 15, 14. Why do ye, why do we sit still, assemble yourself, and let us enter into the defense city, and let us be silent there? For the Lord our God had put us to silence and given us water of God to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. We look for peace, but no good come, came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. Now, look how the Lord is saying this unto the church. Okay? I'm going to another part of the scripture. And I just want the church to understand that man is taking the word of God in the wrong way. Jeremiah chapter 14 in the 19th verse tell us, Has thou utterly reject Judah? Has thou sold Luke Zion? Why hast thou smited, smitten us? And there is no healing for us. We look for peace, and there is no good, and for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. Now, why am I saying that? They're telling you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The church got to come and understand that Jesus was that peace. And he did come unto him. But the scriptures say they did not receive him. So I'm just sharing with you why these things going on now where you all are saying pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The prophet is saying something different where there is no peace. Why you go to John chapter 1 and it tell us what was said about Jesus that he had came unto his own and his own received him not and that's in John chapter 1 and the 11 verse now look where I'm going to now and I want the church to understand what is happening Jeremiah chapter 9, the 8th and 9th verse tell us this. It says, Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speak the sea, one speak peacefully to his neighbor with his mouth, and in his heart he laid in wait. Shall the ninth verse tell us, Shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not 
my soul be avenged on such a nation as this. Now, I'm going to Ezekiel chapter 7, and I want the church to pay close attention to what the Lord is saying. Ezekiel chapter 7, pay attention, and I'm going to read the 25th verse. It's talking about destruction coming the I'm going to read it. Ezekiel chapter 7 and the 25th verse. Pay close attention. The 25th verse. Destruction coming and it shall seek peace and there should be none. The 26th verse, mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law should perish from the priest and counsel from the ancient. Now, pay attention to how the Lord is saying this. Ezekiel chapter 13 and the 16th verse. It says, to wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied concerning Jerusalem, and with see vision of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. Okay, now, why the Lord had me to say that unto the church? Now I'm going to 1 Thessalonians, and I want the church to pay close attention to what the Lord is saying. I'm going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And look what I'm going to read. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and I'm going to start off at the first verse and go to the third and hear what the Lord say. The first verse. 1 Thessalonians. It says this, But of the time and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so coming as a thief in the night. For when they should see peace and safety, then sudden the destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now by the grace of God, I'm going to Luke chapter 19, and I want the church to pay close attention to what the Lord is saying. Luke chapter 19. And look what it says. Luke chapter 19, and I'm going to read the 42 verse all the way to the 44 verse. Okay, hear what the Lord said. Okay, look what he said. Starting at the 41 verse, it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it saying, If thou hast known even thou, at least in the day, in this, in, at least in this thy day, the things which be unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day should come upon thee, that thy enemies should cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You see what the Lord is saying unto the church. And listen to what the Lord has said unto the church. Now come to understand why this is being said. And the forty the, the forty six verse, where the forty fifth verse to the forty eight verse tell us. The forty fifth starting there. It says, and he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house should be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. 
and he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for the people were very attentive to hear him. That's Romans chapter 3. And the 17th verse tell us this here. And I want the church people. They say, in the way of peace have they not known. Now come to understand. I'm going to read Romans chapter 3. And I'm going to start off with the ninth verse. They say, when then are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they all, all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. These is none that, there is none that do good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used to see. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known there is no fear of God before their eyes. By the grace of God, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 23, and I want the church hear what the Lord is saying unto the church in Matthew chapter 23 and the 38 verse. And look what the Lord say unto the church. 38 verse of Matthew chapter 23. Here it is. Look what it says. The 37th verse, I'm going to start off there. The 36th, I'm going to start off there. They say, Verily I say unto you, all these things should come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stone them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. By the grace of God, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 13, and I'm going to read the 35th verse of Luke chapter 13. 13 to 15 verse. Look what the Lord is saying. The 15 verse. The Lord then answered him and said, Thy hypocrite, do not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water him. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound loose these eighteen years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Why am I reading that? The thirteen, and look at it plainly. I'm going to read the thirty-fifth verse. Well, I'm going to go to the thirty-fourth verse. I want you all to pay close attention. Luke chapter thirteen, and I'm going to start at the thirty-fourth verse and read the thirty-five. It's pertaining to Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophet, and stoned them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen do gather her brood under her wings? And ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye should say, Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Now I'm going to go to Second Chronicles and I want the church to come to understand what the Lord is saying. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. 
chapter 16 in the ninth verse, and I want the church to come to understand. And the ninth verse tell us, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishness. Therefore from henceforth God should have walls. By the grace of God I'm just trying to give the church an understanding in what is happening now. So it's the reason when Jesus said that even daughters generation seek a sign and none should be given. These things are happening for a reason. These things are happening for a reason. And I hope the church understands what's going on. The 16 and the 17 books. The 16. To wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesied concerning Jerusalem and which see vision of peace for her and there is no peace, said the Lord God. Likewise, thy son of man, set thy face against the daughter of thy people which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. 